Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here, and I've got a major report I wanna share with you on you know people freaking out in California over some of the earthquakes, the volcanic activity, and I've got some mind-blowing information that's about to be shared about some of the events that could be coming in the very near future. So on today's report, I brought Steve Quayle on. So Steve, are you with me over there? Yes, Lisa, and thank you, because this is a critical subject matter because over the last several days, People have been observed the uh, NASA plane flying pretty much in a zigzag pattern up along the different earthquake faults, the San Andreas Fault, the Garlock Fault, and also now that plane, I think it was either today or, no, it was yesterday, that plane yesterday went into the Boise, Idaho area of the Craters of the Moon volcanic field. And what most people never associate is Idaho with 12 active volcanoes. Now, Idaho is about 300 miles, at least that area is probably now 300, 2 to 300 miles from Yellowstone. It's to the west of Yellowstone. But what's interesting is not only is a NASA plane zigzagging up to San Andreas, the Garlock, they then moved north and they're basically scanning with some of the most sophisticated remote sensing billies in the world. They're checking for any type of magnetic field anomaly. They're checking for any emission of gas, sulfur gas. They're checking for any thermal hot spots. They're checking literally with a CAT scanning ability. And I'm told that off the record, it goes 100 miles deep. Now, most people, if they see the ancient shows on TV, the Travel Channel, History Channel or whatever, you're limited to a, a specific depth. These guys have enough juice and whatever they're using to basically CAT scan the Earth. So why is this important? Because over the last, now let's say two weeks now, uh, the Ridgecrest area after a 7.1 earthquake has had 15,000 quakes. And as I study this, and right now I'm in the uh, process of filming uh, the Cascade Volcanoes, I have a film crew and helicopters a couple of weeks ago, literally photographing every volcano. We're doing it in 7K, so the detail is astronomical. Then some of the foremost volcanologists, geologists, and uh, seismologists have been interviewed. And I want to read this to you because you know... Before you read that quote, I'm going to interrupt you because I got one important question. I definitely want to check that out. You had mentioned that NASA planes were flying over and you sent me the link and it was amazing. Uh, you know, seeing that they're studying it to that level, do you know if that's something they do often or is this something new as a result of the two quakes that recently hit in Ridgecrest area? That's a great question. Thanks for backing me up. Bring me back to Earth. You just did. That does not happen. Those guys don't go up. In other words, you're asking me, is it routine? Is it seasonal, annual? Based on the people I know in that world, they absolutely said no. And the, the quote was, they don't go up there for nothing. So it is an unusual event. It's not a normal event. And when what, what they're really worried about, China Lake is one of the deepest underground military bunkers or bases in the world. And there's a 240 square mile magma pool under that area. You can go on. You can go on YouTube, as you know. And uh, I'm sorry about that phone. You can go on YouTube, and you can literally see the videos uh, in motion of what how big the rift was from that earthquake. You know, they've got the before and after. What they're worried about is a magma stream going from the desert headed west into pretty much the La Brea Tar Pits area, which I would encourage all of your viewers to go and watch the movie with Tommy Lee Jones, uh, Volcano. And that's kind of the same route. And one of the first signals was that, or excuse me, one of the first signals in that was the bubbling tar and the San Andreas and then uh, some people getting, uh, uh, you know, uh, different seismic signals going down into the, uh, if you will, some of the tunnels under California. So what they're worried about, in my opinion, and, and this is the opinion of the people that I'm talking to, is they're trying to follow all magmatic movement, magma. They're trying to see what's going on under the area of the uh, craters to the moon volcanoes, and they're really watching the San Andreas and the Garlock. Now, it is my intention to make it clear to people that the problem of the Cascade region is way more severe than Yellowstone. I'll forgo the quote, too. And the reason why I'm trying to get people to understand that is because when you see how many people live on the coast, 
we know the government will not tell us ahead of time of any really severe threat. Is that a fair statement? A hundred percent. That's why I, I, I wanted to point out it's a critical to, to note that this is not something that's routinely done. So you have to ask the question, why now? Are they worried about something? And, and, and that's the thing. Um, I'm pretty sure nobody, in, I'm 99.9% sure we wouldn't be notified. Uh, and I don't even know if there's a for sure way that they would be able to tell, but hours to minutes before, I, I don't even know. Right. That's one of the questions we're answering in the uh, whole Cascade uh, documentary. And uh, tentatively, the working title is Cascadia, The Real Threat. And we'll be in post-production probably two weeks, and I hope to have it available by Branson. Speaking of Branson, I'm going to be there. I, I know we wanted to give a shout out in the beginning, but gen6.com. I'll leave a link below, but G-E-N-S-I-X.com. My husband and I are going to be there. I can't wait for it. I know we're sidetracked, but we'll get back to it. So keep going, Steve. I, I, I'm, the, I'm the master of sidetracking, but hopefully I'll bring it back to the train station. So the threat is real. It's never happened before. And the amount of people that live on the West Coast within harm's way. Look, one of the finest articles ever written about it, the death projection is eight to nine million people if the Cascades go off. There is no way on their tsunami evacuation routes to get the people out of harm's way, especially if it's coming from the west, the ocean, and simultaneously erupting to the east of the ocean in the Cascades. Because, again, people will be then sandwiched together. And, you know, the idea is to have advance warning. And so some of the scientists are modeling the magma pools under the ocean. They actually have a video cam on Axial Seamount, A-X-I-A-L. I think it's at about 4,500 feet uh, beneath the ocean, uh, you know, somewhere around there. And so the thing that I'm wanting to people to understand, the thing I'm wanting people to understand the most is that, number one, they would not put the plane up. Number two, they're putting it in areas of real concern, and Idaho being one. I guarantee you, not one in a hundred, no, that's even, I don't believe 99 people in a hundred even know of Idaho's seismic problem. Yeah, and I, 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 I briefed it a while back, but I forgot, I've forgotten about it you know, now. So, so why does the most sophisticated sensing plan that NASA have turn pretty much to the northeast after being on the San Andreas primarily and being to the east on the Garlock Lock? Well, obviously, they're looking for any type of connection. What people don't realize is over the years and thousands of years, there are huge lava tubes, just like you see in Hawaii if you go there, you know, especially on the Kilauea, the most recent eruptions of Kilauea, etc. cetera. Uh, and now we're being told again that, uh, what is it, uh, Mauna Loa is starting to be active again. So what I want people to understand is this. Why volcanoes and how they affect people are important is, number one, the immediate loss of life, but number two, the ongoing loss of life, because when you're locked into a place with no food or no water, outside of airlifting, you're pretty much toast. And the concern, believe it or not, is for real estate prices. If California and Oregon and parts of Washington told people that here's the threat, here's how re uh, uh, real the threat is and how immediate the threat is, what do you think that would do to insurance policies? And if you don't have insurance policies and title insurance, you can't sell it. So you have, you know, basically, at the end of the day, it's not about your life, it's about the economy, how it affects the greater good. So, you know, I want people to come away from this interview as saying, and by the way, there have never been that many earthquakes in that short a period of time that I can find any place in the world. And they're still ongoing. Like I've been checking the area back and forth and it's still like rattling and rolling. And, you know, what, what, what I guess, let me um, ask kind of a different question. What do you think is the most critical uh, of all of it? You know, is it San Andreas? Is it the Cascadia? Is it what's going on in Idaho? Just a, an opinion, I guess, because they're all important to pay attention to, well, obviously. In my, well, in my opinion, the most immediate threat, okay, the most immediate threat, and that could, let me put a time period on it. That's a dangerous thing to do. But if, I would say this, 90 days immediate threat is going to be what's going on in the China Lake area as it relates to the magma pool underneath it. 
What's my most immediate concern is obviously the amount of seismic activity and the harmonic quakes. There was a guy named Bernard Chouet, C-H-O-U-E-T, who came up with, and he works for the USGS, who basically came up with a, a protocol for trying to establish an eruption date for a volcano. And it worked on Mount Pinatubo. And basically, they were called long period episodic quakes. So the longer you have this episode of quakes, the more danger there is. And so then my question is, and here's another question. You remember when we heard almost immediately that China Lake was unfit, they, that they, they had to pull the military out of there? I'm questioning whether it was on top of the surface or underneath the surface, because you can go on the Internet and look up, you know, how many deep underground military bases there are. And then they're all connected by high speed mag magnetic levitation trains. This isn't conspiracy. But here's the deal. If your life means nothing and my life means nothing and only the economic consequences, we then have to be, quote, what we are. We have to be alternative news. And the reality of the danger will never be put on the TV until it's after the fact. It's kind of like a nuclear war. Imagine a, a mushroom pedestal of cameras, a news anchor that looks disheveled, and, uh, you know, she's still broadcasting, but you can see the power line to everything, and it's cut. And she said, does this mean that we're done with our show now? You know, you know what I'm saying. It's so ridiculous. So, again... I've undertaken, and, and, you know, when I say stuff like this, I try and, you know, um, be ahead of the game. And for 25 years, I think I have been, especially on AI, transhumanism, weather wars, geoengineering. And that's just a fact. When you get old, you can look back and say, hey, I remember talking about that stuff or writing books. But now, because of the nature of the times we live in, I'm going to an every other day broadcast on my, what is it called, qfiles.tv that's not just a pitch, but I'm going to that because, you know, salute to you guys that have been doing that. I've been off, you know, radio for too long. I appear as guests and stuff on people's shows. But now I find out, Lisa, through the night that there's such important stories. And if you don't grab them at night, they disappear during the day. Even like the one about the FBI agent that supposedly suicided himself that was inventing the Clintons. I put that up on my site. I'm not saying it was mine that got it taken down. 30 minutes, it was a 404 error. Now it's up again. So, so what I want to share is this. I've taken on the most ambitious project that's ever been done in the private sector concerning Cascadia. Not, quote, my feelings, what I think, in investigating the people that are the smartest people in the world and what their concerns are. I can say, in my opinion, and not compromise anybody's, um, you know, position. But the thing that I'm trying to say to people is, what's the chance of the literal day, and I don't believe in chance, I believe it was uh, simply a, a miracle that my film crew in an aerial uh, helicopter, that's all being filmed from the air, is on Mount St. Helens the same day within hours after the cluster of earthquakes took place, they're filming the bulge. The bulge is about the same height as the Empire State Building, 1,450 feet. And that's indicative that there's seismic activity coming. And literally, the, they move down to the south and, and down to the south, Mount Lassen and stuff, and Shasta to the left, I mean, Shasta to the west, Mount Lassen and stuff to the east. And they're there when the same thing starts to happen. So I believe that, again, I believe that God gives warning to people. But the mainstream media, which, what, do they ever tell the truth? My answer is no. For anybody to put MSM and truth in the same equation, they're crazy. So what are they doing? They're blocking you. They're blocking me. They're taking on Alex. They're taking on uh, Mike Adams. They're taking on anybody who's got a voice, a following, or influence. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and that's the thing. They've tried to shut me down. They've tried to shut others down like multiple times. And then they go and just purge and lie to Congress about all of it. And I'm glad we're kind of seeing a little bit of headway on that. Although they can, it can halt with some kind of disaster or economic crisis. But um, the truth is, you were talking about MSM, and they constantly hide stuff. Like nobody in California found out about those two earthquakes in Ridgecrest. Ridgecrest, they just happened there by China Lake. Nobody was told. Nobody was told of the economic recession back uh, a few years ago, 2008, 2006 crisis, that whole thing. Nobody was told. And so going forward, I think the American public knows that they won't be notified. 
Well, right. And now we've got the European Union trying to fine people $15,000 if you link to any copyrighted story. Even with permission, I'll tell you a good example. Uh, there was a story where there was a picture of a man having a baby. It wasn't really a man. It was transgender. That picture was copyrighted. And the, the original article, I forget where it showed, was, uh, you know, paid for the usage of that image. Anybody who, who linked to the paid usage of that image was, you know, served with copyright infringement. And I think, you know, uh, I think I had to sell with 500 bucks or something. But now the EU is saying it's fifteen thousand dollars. So I'm moving, and I, I want to share this because people are going to say, "Where are you?" I'm moving off YouTube. I'm not telling anybody else to. I'm I'm moving to QFiles.tv. I put up, and I'm serious because I've got to. You know what ad revenue you've had, and that's how we stay on the air. And look, we're willing to put our lives on the line and stuff. People that complain about supporting us, they don't. Well, you know, I'll put I'll put a question to your audience. What are you going to do when there's no more Lisa Haven? What are you going to do when there's no more Alex Jones? Some of you will rejoice, but you don't understand the war against him is a war against all of us. And by the way, I want to make this clear: I never talk to him off air. I don't email him. He doesn't talk to me. I went on a show once last year. I doubt I'll ever go on again because you know you it's just it's just not my audience. There are people that listen to Alex, listen to me. But why I'm saying that is where are they going to go when we're no longer there? And if they don't support us, Lisa, then there's no point in doing it. Believe me, I take too many Excedrin in a day. I know it's bad for you. You know what I'm saying? 18-hour uh, bags under my eyes because I get up and post through the night. And I, you know, I'm not saying you do. I'm just saying I do. Um, you know, one guy said he, I look like uh, I, I smoked a bag of I smoked a bag of bad hash or something. Well, I don't smoke. But again, the thing is, at six, I'm 68. I turn. I'm not asking for anything. But next week is my birthday, and I have to make every day count. And I think people are going to be unable to cope with all the events coming unless they have Jesus. And I'm not selling that out. People say, "Well, you're, you're scaring me." I said, "I don't have any fear. I have trepidation." At what's going to happen? Because look, if we've got the plagues of Egypt, we got half of them going on right now. And when the firstborn were being killed in Egypt, we're doing that already with what I call baby butchering. I no longer use abortion; I use baby butchering with pedophilia. You know that was one of the main things. Even when Jesus was going to be born, Herod wanted all the firstborn dead. And then we've got cannibalism. I don't know if you saw the Katy Perry video. I don't recommend it. Did you see it? Yeah, it's just. I... Yeah. Okay. But see, it's out there. And then obviously, we've got darkness. People are saying it's really dark. See, even the thought of cannibalism is the last taboo. It truly is. And yet it's being sold to the public as chic and cool. You know, the UN saying, well, eat insects and, you know, drink whatever, you know, probably the blood of infants. But they're saying, you know, everything is designed to take the standard of living down. There's a paper. I'll send it to you when I'm done um, you know, with the broadcast with you talking about the UN wants to limit people to 31 grams of protein. I think every so many days I posted that it's in my alert section. And, I, and again, you know, after August 1st, let's see, however many days that is all my alerts. That's where I post the most immediate stuff. Go behind qfiles.tv. And, you know, I think you're onto something. And that's that's another reason why I'm heading to your conference in Branson. And I'm going to be there and get some amazing interviews with you and Mike Adams. And I know one of the topics that Mike Adams was going to talk about at your conference was that terraforming Earth and basically trying to make humans not humankind anymore kind of a kind of a you know it's just, it's just getting rid of the human race altogether so uh, I'm actually excited so tell them a little bit about the conference as well uh gen 6 and uh, I, I actually can't wait well thank you for coming September 13th through the 15th in Branson Missouri and, and people need to register at gen 6 gensix.com for either if they want to be there in person or they want to live stream it. I don't think there's anything like it. Uh, we'll be presenting the technology of, uh, Ra Ra I can't say his name, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Remember the movie They Live? And basically that was about sunglasses that could see 
the alien world. Well, in the Bible, it talks about invisible principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness. And I've got one of the smartest guys in the world, Gary Cole, who's never been at any conference speaking. And he's the only guy that I know. He, if, if to tell you how bright he is, he and Hugo de Garris are sitting talking about quantum physics. And everybody's going, what? And quantum entanglement and time dilation and stuff. But he makes it so simple for people to understand. Imagine everything the Bible says that's invisible that you begin to see. And that's when the fear of, uh, that comes upon men's heart that suffers them literally die of fear and women. You know, by the way, most, most women don't know that heart disease is one of the lead killers in women. So the thing, the thing is, is that I think Branson is really critical because it's, it's so time sensitive and we've seen the cover up of aliens and we've seen the cover up of everything that now it's all open. So it's kind of a rush to the door. Who gets to bring it? And Tom Horn and Chris Putnam, when they were on the top of Mount Graham uh, with a Lucifer telescope of the, of the uh, Catholic Church. One of the statements made by one of the foremost astronomers for the Vatican is sometimes we have to wait for an hour for the field of our view to clear of all the alien ships. Wow, that's amazing. And that is just one reason I'm going. So I hope to see some of you guys there. I'd love to see you. I know, I know that conference actually sells out fairly quickly. So I know when I was booking the hotel, one of the hotels was already sold out and the other one I got. So thankfully <laughs> I got there. So thank you again, Steve. I truly You're appreciate welcome, Lisa. it. I ex I'm excited to see you and see your husband there. And thanks for having me on today. And again, qfiles.tv is where all of my contemporary stuff, all my videos are going to go after August 1st. Thank you. Perfect. And I'll leave a link for all of that in the description box below. Uh, well, thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven, and that was Steve Quayle signing out. Real quick, I just wanted to remind you guys to please check out my partner at hidewithlisa.com. If you guys don't have a virtual private network, I want to encourage you to please get one. I've partnered specifically with them because I know that they throw everything out in 24 hours. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, you know, get, getting them getting a knock on the door and having all your information. It gets shredded, unlike the VPNs that are free. And again, if you're not familiar with a VPN, it basically basically hides your IP address and acts as if, you know, you're in Los Angeles when you're really in Texas or Austin, Texas. So it kind of makes it look as if somebody else is doing the searches. And in today's day, it's unfortunate, but we need something that does that because you have hackers and, and, and people stealing your data, people like Facebook, Google, and even the NSA tracking everything you do. And bottom line, it's none of their business. So check it out at hidewithlisa.com.